Thanks, guys, for that carrier update. We're here with our next live guest this morning, Drew Schemmelfing from OSEA, talking all about the future of wireless charging for trackers. Drew, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You bet, Kaylee. Long, long time listener, first time caller. Glad to be here. It's great to have nice you, to meet you on. Guys. Definitely, Drew. Thanks so much for, for joining us. Tell us about this technology, man. You sound, I, I was reading about it, and it sounds like you've solved something Nikola Tesla was trying to solve many <laughs> years ago. So, so what, is it, uh, what is this technology, and how does it apply to the logistics industry? Yeah. Yeah, so let's clarify. I have not solved it. <laughs> ASEA has solved it. But uh, absolutely. And when I heard it I, about it, I thought the exact same thing. This is something that uh, I didn't think I would see in my lifetime, to be honest. So you think about you know, Wi-Fi and what it's done to just cut the cable, right? And so with, with uh, ASEA's technology, CODA, it's a synonymous with wireless um, energy. So what uh, Wi-Fi has done to allow us to do everything we do wirelessly, completely wirelessly, CODA is gonna do to bring energy and power to those same devices. So you will have real wireless power and you can be finally completely wireless. So I'm I'm on a really big quantum mechanics kick right now. I'm reading books. I've listened to a couple of podcasts <laughs> about quantum mechanics, and like quantum mechanics is right. the, the reason why we can see each other uh, through a screen right now. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys have harnessed this kind of technology and put it into an application that's applicable for the freight and logistics world. Yeah. So two really really good questions. So. Think about Wi-Fi. Think about the fact that you've got this transmitter and it's sending, you know, this radio frequency and it's all around us right now, right? So with CODA wireless power, same concept, you have a transmitter and then you have receivers and building into these wireless devices, Zergo, uh, this tracker, the XT4700 is a, is a perfect example. They've taken that CODA receiver and they put it into their, their rechargeable device. So now that wireless tracker, that tracker that already had cellular and already had GPS wireless technology, now has wireless recharging capability. So the difference though, between how CODA works and how Wi-Fi works is that it's directed. So it harnesses all of the power at the, you know, from multiple antennas from that transmitter to the one receiver at a time. And so that receiver is able to get meaningful energy and, um, compensate, you know, for the loss that you see in that transaction, that transmission, and actually start charging instead of only consuming. So Drew, what are the... And then the oh, sorry to interrupt. Drew, this is Andrew here. I was just wondering, you know, what, what are the use cases right now? What is the CODA technology being put in? You yeah. keep mentioning these trackers. I just wanted a little bit more clarity there. Yeah, exactly. So it's great for me that this technology is in this industry first. Love this industry. Um, and the use case in particular is one that, you know, it's, it's an obvious use case. Trackers, you need to know where your assets are. You need to know where your equipment is. You need to know where your people are. You need to know where your commodity is, where your freight is. So with the Zergo um, Sensata, Sensata Insights uh, XT47 tracker, what they've done is they found a use case where you've got equipment coming on to, it, say, a distribution center. Maybe some of that equipment coming out of the distribution center is already company-owned. So this already has a tracker, but there's a lot of non-company equipment that's coming onto that yard that has to be accounted for while it's there at the DC at the distribution center. It's dropping hook. You know, did the driver put it where the driver said he was going to, where he was told to put it? Maybe he did. When, you know, the yard dog came around, did he find it in the same place where it was? Did he grab the wrong trailer, put it back somewhere else? So in order to eliminate the need to ever ask the question, you know, where's, where's my box? You are able to use that that uh, Sensata Insights um, XT47 developed by Zergo to find your asset. Now that same tracker has a rechargeable battery currently, but Coda is recharging that battery. So you have a really good opportunity within this use case to grab that tracker um, when it's not in use as it's being outgated. Go ahead and and recharge it during its downtime by marrying it up with the uh, ASEA transmitter. And so this is, like you said, the marriage of the transmitter to the receiver. And is this kind of everywhere? Will this be nationwide? Like, could you be driving down the street as long as your transmitter is not actively running and then you're picking up the wireless charging signal so you're on the road from point A to point B and you're getting recharged even though you're not using your transmitter? Is that how this kind of works? 
Right. So that's what's really exciting about this technology is that the way that it is designed, the uniqueness of it, the proprietariness of it allows for that. Right. So you are able to take the same concept. I have um, a transmitter and I have a device that's able to receive that message and then start that conversation and, and start absorbing that energy. So you have that same ability for any device, any device that's currently um, uh, needs to be recharged, needs to be plugged in to, to recharge. You also have the ability for low drain devices to be able to get the batteries out of those completely no, in, and actually send the energy over the air wirelessly. Great example of that, um, very close to the transportation retail is those electronic shelf labels that you see. So you've got electronic shelf labels that are up, constantly updating prices. Maybe they've got QR codes with, with coupons on them. Um, they obviously need some sort of power source, but we're able to actually power those over the air with no batteries in those devices from a transmitter that's over the aisle. And you think about you know, how the supply chain is, has changed and you have stores now that are fulfillment centers. So during um, you know, the lockdown, if you did go to a store, you saw more pickers, uh, the, the employees fulfilling orders in the store. And that's not stopped. There's still uh, a lot of a lot of folks that are that are filling orders while you're shopping for other people that are sitting at home, right? So they need the same sort of technology as those electronic shelf labels. Um, it's called Pick the Light. So they know what the order is. As soon as they enter that aisle, Lasia can power that shelf label and communicate with it and let them know that they need to go pick you know that item at that location very very quickly. Yeah, Drew, you're exactly right. I mean, if you had gone into a Whole Foods over the past year, you can't walk through the aisles without right. bumping into more pickers and packers than there are shoppers. Hey, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Right. One on competition. You guys, I wanted to see, you know, are there any other companies also, you know, vying for this type of technology? And then two, on your business model, are you guys manufacturing these types of equipment or are you guys just licensing the technology right. to OEMs and other manufacturers? Right. So on the competition side, absolutely, um, ASEA has some differentiators in the approach, and uh, obviously we protected those. So we feel like we have the real wireless power and at a distance. So not only over the air, but way different than what we see today with the Qi chargers that are you know very very you know close, you get close proximity. So we're gonna we're gonna you know handle the short range, the mid range, and the and the long range. And we're starting you know with the short range, the one meter. So um, as we grow. And as the technology uh, takes off, there'll be certainly more use cases and there'll be certainly more partners. So to the next question, yeah, absolutely. Um, we are a licensor of this technology. Um, we will uh, partner with you and, and uh, give you the you know, reference design kit and some engineering support and you know, stand beside you as you get your technology completely wireless with the, uh, with the Coda. Drew, so I live my life on the motto, ask smart people dumb questions. You seem like a very smart person, okay. so here's a very dumb question. Could this technology be coming to my iPhone, to my Bluetooth headphones one day? Yeah, absolutely. So that's something, you know, you talked about headphones, right? Um, and, the, you know, the fact that that's on your body, everyone's like, wait a minute. But the reality is that the way it's designed, this is another differentiator for us. We actually start the conversation from your iPhone. So your iPhone tells the transmitter where you are in relation to that transmitter. And if you, your body, your person is between that transmitter and um, your headset, we're not going to send any energy that way. We're going to find a different path to um, that device that needs that power. So yes, absolutely feasible. The size of the receiver, very small. Um, it can fit inside the AA battery already. So um, you know, things will get smaller and yeah, Certainly, uh, headphones are a good example. Now, in the meantime, what you absolutely could do, you know, instead of putting your headphones in, even instead of putting them in a case, you know, you could just drop them in a box. Um, and uh, that everything that's in that box that's capable of receiving power would receive that energy. Thank you so much for your insights today, man. This has been really insightful. We'll have you on again shortly. Yeah, man, we'll come to Chattanooga. Send us an invite. We'll be Definitely there. so. Come down to F3 here in November. We've got our first in-person event uh, in you know almost two years. It's going to be huge. <laughs> and it's our first one here in Chattanooga. So more than welcome.